I can't sell a product that I don't believe in, let alone that could be harmful to people. I think you have to go to five meetings. And I was just gung-ho for it. I thought it was great. Consistency in doing the same thing day in and day out. They didn't really explain actually what they did. She just was so excited and so happy and nice. I don't even remember how she got me to go to the meeting. Multi-level marketing. What exactly is it and why is its popularity on the rise? Before we answer these questions, I wanna share a story about a specific time when an MLM or multi-level marketing company tried to recruit me. So the year is 2017. I've just dropped out of college. I'm currently looking for new business ventures to get involved with. And this attractive woman that I used to know reaches out to me on Facebook. Her and I haven't talked in a year and a half, and we start chatting on Facebook Messenger and things are going pretty well. So I get her number, give her a call, we're talking, reconnecting, and she starts talking to me about a business venture that she is currently involved with. She found these wealthy people, convinced them, in her words, to start mentoring her and teaching her about money, and she said, honestly, Morgan, I think that I could convince them to start mentoring you. So why don't I introduce you to them? So we set up a time to meet. I show up to her house. We have the meeting with her mentor. There was nothing particularly multi-level markety in this meeting. I'd had run-ins with other MLMs in the past, but this meeting, we mostly just talked about business. It was very sneaky. Our little meeting sort of comes to a close and suddenly an event starts. I, w I wasn't aware of this event. The people are suddenly all around me and the speaker gets up. He starts talking all about what they're doing, everything. Everyone in the room is clapping and cheering at literally everything he says. And he's just saying generic phrases, things like passive income and financial freedom, get out of the rat race. Every business is shaped like a pyramid, so don't be tricked by the corporate structure. These common phrases that aren't really teaching you anything, they're just kind of buzzwords. I find out that the company that they're all with is Amway. At this point, it's pretty clear to me that this is an MLM. I explained to this girl that I am not interested, and honestly, she shouldn't be either. It's a very difficult way to make money and they have a lot of sketchy practices as far as marketing the product and how to build a system that makes money. I mean, this is right after I dropped out of college. I knew nothing about business, but I at least knew this. This experience really sticks out to me because this was the first time that even after I found out what company it was, they still tried to conceal the fact that it was an MLM. I mean, she argued with me very strongly that it wasn't an MLM. Eventually, we just had to agree to disagree and we parted ways and that was the end of that. The experience sticks out to me though because them trying so hard to conceal it, even after I found out what company it was, I left feeling totally catfished. It wasn't the first time that I showed up for a business meeting that was just a recruiting event, but this one just seemed particularly slimy. These recruitment events, they used to be common in my life. I think that happens to a lot of people. What I noticed is these events stopped happening. I stopped finding myself at these recruitment events. The older I got, the more experienced I got, and especially once I started my own company. And I think it's because People in MLMs stopped seeing me as a vulnerable target. And that's what they do, whether they're being honest with themselves or not. They're sort of preying on the vulnerable. People who are poor, people who are go-getters, but don't really know much about business yet. Essentially, once I started doing something with my life, once I realized that there is no easy path to success, these events just disappeared. I don't get invited to them anymore and I couldn't be more thrilled about it. I hate those kinds of events. And I also think 
the more run-ins you have with MLMs, it gets easier and easier to recognize when someone is inviting you to one. So what exactly is an MLM? Investopedia states that an MLM is a monetary strategy used by direct sales companies to encourage existing distributors to recruit new distributors. Sounds pretty simple, right? And that definition alone isn't inherently bad. So when talking about MLMs, a lot of people call them pyramid schemes. And are MLMs pyramid schemes? The answer to that is it's actually pretty complicated. A pyramid scheme is illegal, whereas an MLM isn't. And they're very, very similar with one key difference. That difference is that an MLM has an actual product, whereas a pyramid scheme doesn't. So if I had a pyramid scheme and I invited you into it, it would be something like, hey, join my pyramid, you will pay me $10, and then anyone that you recruit underneath you will also pay you $10. You guys would be my downline in this case. Then the people that you recruit under you, I would get a commission, so a portion of that $10 that you're getting. The bigger the pyramid gets, the more the person at the top benefits. It's not sustainable because there's no actual product and eventually, you recruit everyone on earth and the people on the bottom of the pyramid have absolutely no way of making money. Whereas the people on the top, the farther up you are on the pyramid, the more money you make. So it's inherently made to scam people out of money at some point. It's not sustainable and it is illegal. A multi-level marketing company has to prove that their primary focus is selling a product. So say, the MLM is selling hair products or essential oils. They have to prove that they're trying to sell that product to people and that goal is more important to them than recruiting sales reps or distributors. Things get really fuzzy here because in order to join an MLM, you have to buy the product. So that's how they get away with it. When was the last time you got hired for a job and had to pay to have that job or you weren't even interviewed for it, you were just accepted and then you had to pay monthly in order to have that job? It's inherently pretty sketchy. If you take a step back and look at a pyramid scheme versus an MLM, they both act almost exactly the same. But the key difference is that the MLM has an actual product that they are supposedly selling. And they'll often tell you this product sells itself, even though we'll get into that. Most MLM products actually have competing products that you can just buy on Amazon for a cheaper price and it's a lot easier. But that's the difference there, is that if you're in an MLM, you're selling a product. If you're in a pyramid scheme, there's no product or service. So if MLMs and pyramid schemes are so closely related, then how do MLMs legally stay in business? It's difficult to prove what a company is primarily focusing on behind closed doors. How much money are they making from new recruits, otherwise known as customers, <laughs> compared to just plain customers that aren't a part of the network? It's difficult to prove when all of your new recruits are also customers. All of the new recruits are also customers because it's required for them to buy product every month in order to stay a part of the network. Since starting my business, I've worked with a few MLMs. I've filmed for them. It's easy to tell that a company is an MLM once you're with them, but beforehand, they usually make every effort to hide it. When I get a client that ends up being an MLM, I'll generally part ways with them, kind of you know, wish them the best. And that generally happens after I've already filmed for them once, simply because they'll make every effort that they can to hide the fact that they're an MLM. I remember once a few years back, I filmed for an MLM in the area. I didn't know they were an MLM before I filmed for them. After I finished the video, 
this girl that I was doing the video for, she wanted to embed the promo video on her website. So I sent her a private YouTube link. Immediately after I sent it to her, her boss called me and said, hey, we've got to get that off YouTube. We can't have any of our promotional content on YouTube. And I remember thinking, what kind of a business doesn't want to promote what they do on the second biggest search engine in the world? And the only logical explanation to that is if they show what they're actually doing, they are far, far more likely to get in trouble because everything we did in that promo video was all about recruiting. It wasn't actually about the product. So they're trying to hide it. They, they don't want people to see that their main focus is recruiting, not in actually selling the product. Now, why wouldn't a company want any of their promotional content on YouTube, which is the second biggest search engine in the world, by the way. It's a great way to get business. It doesn't make any sense. And the reason why is because of the fuzzy difference between a pyramid scheme and an MLM. If an MLM can't prove that their primary focus is in selling the product rather than getting recruits, then it moves into the illegal territory. And this whole promo video that we did, it essentially was all about recruiting. There was no mention of the product at all. I still don't really know what their product was after doing a promo video for them. Just real quickly, fun side note, there's actually this website that I found while researching for this video. And in this website, there's a little search bar where you can input the name of a company and it will tell you whether or not that company is an MLM. They have hundreds of companies listed, not every single company. I, I put in a few that it, it didn't have any data on them yet, but it's kind of cool to see that you can just go in there and check what companies that your friends are distributing for are actually MLMs. MLMs are gaining popularity at the moment, especially here in Utah, where I live. As you can see here from Google Trends, MLM is searched more in Utah than in any other state in the nation. So we've got to ask ourselves, if MLMs are so bad, then why are they becoming more popular? It doesn't make sense to me that so many people believe in this thing that's so obviously bad. The FTC carried out a study on MLMs. I'll link it down below. The study is actually fascinating to read. One of the things that they mentioned in this study, I'll read what they said, it's really interesting. In a nutshell, MLM is predicated on the recruitment of an endless chain of participants as primary customers. MLM compensation plans assume an infinite market and a virgin market, neither of which exists in the real world. MLM is therefore inherently flawed, unfair, and deceptive. This document goes on to explain that MLMs will usually calculate their success rates by anyone in the company history who has made money, but they'll leave out everyone who left or dropped out. This makes their success rates incredibly inaccurate and dishonest. At the time of this study, the monthly price to be a new skin distributor was $100 per month and they had over 75,000 distributors. Of this 75,000, 65,000 of them weren't making any money. So you look at that and think, wow, a sales force of 65,000 people that are all paying this company $100 a month. That's a pretty incredible revenue model for the people on top, right? It goes on to explain that the next 6,000 of them we're making $744 per year. That was the next tier. And so these are people who are still earning negative money by being a sales rep for them, by being a, a distributor, right? They're, they're customers. Less than 200 of that 75,000 were making six figures. Of that very, very small group at the top, almost all of them had been with the company for more than five years. So you look at these numbers and think, wow, it would take a very, very long time to be able to start making good money doing this. This study didn't include people who had dropped out of the program early. It was estimated that if the dropouts had been counted, then 99.38% of new skin distributors 
lost money. On top of that, it was commonly being taught at New Skin at the time that in order to climb the ranks, you had to spend a lot of money on the marketing. And they would tell people it would usually cost about $18,000 a year spent on all of these things in order to climb the ranks. So you look at these people near the bottom, the 65,000, the 6,000 just above them. I mean, we're talking 99% of this, 70, this group of 75,000 people. They're either losing money or just barely breaking even. These statistics got even worse for other MLMs. New Skin's actually doing better than most MLMs. Remember Amway, that company that we talked about at the beginning of this video? It was estimated that 99.94% of distributors in Amway were losing money. That's less than one in a thousand people that were actually making any money with Amway. Even with the worst statistics of small business failure rates, you're still far more likely to make money by starting an actual business than by being a distributor for one of these MLMs. There are certain terms that they use to get the attention of the vulnerable and even people with good intentions and hustlers that just don't know any better. These terms could be classified as buzzwords, things like financial freedom and passive income. Once again, looking at Google Trends, as the term MLM gains popularity, these terms passive income and financial freedom go up. There's, there's more interest in these terms. And that can tell us that as MLMs get more popularity, they're selling the dream, they're, they're selling the scam here. Now, we need to be careful here because I don't think we need to destroy the vision of what financial freedom and passive income are. These two things are possible. They just take an insane amount of work and the vast majority of people that are achieving these things are not in any way associated with an MLM. There's a big problem with promoting these things in a way that makes them seem easy. It's inherently dishonest and corrupt. These things, financial freedom, passive income, they simply can't come easily. They take a ton of work, no matter how you slice it. Most wealthy people will say that it wouldn't have been possible to build their wealth without loving their work, or at the very least having an intense passion for it. Given the choice, humans don't stick with difficult things unless they love it. That's one of the reasons why it's so difficult to start a business, because it's so much easier to just binge watch Netflix or play video games. Building a systematized business is one of the most difficult things that a person can do. If it wasn't the case, then everyone would do it because the benefits are so high for having one of those. So this brings us back to the problem of passive income and financial freedom. It might be possible to obtain these things through an MLM, but right off the bat, it's gonna be difficult because the vast majority of people in an MLM aren't going to be intensely passionate about the product that they're selling. This creates a big problem when passive income is difficult no matter what route you take. So for example, if you have someone who loves music and they join an MLM to become financially free so that they can focus on their music, and in this MLM they are selling hair products, because of their lack of passion for hair products, they would actually be more likely to become successful creating a business that revolves around their love of music rather than focusing on the MLM with hair products, simply due to the fact that their passion is misplaced. It's focusing on hair products rather than music. It, it doesn't work. You've got to focus on the thing that you have passion for. If you have absolutely no passion for something, it becomes almost impossible to become successful. To add insult to injury, products within MLMs are generally more expensive than their easily accessible competitive counterparts. And I would add to this, if you're currently thinking of joining an MLM, please do research on the product because chances are there is a competitor, some other easily accessible product that people can just find on Amazon and get it shipped right to their door that's cheaper and people will always go with that option over the MLM product option. Apart from financial freedom and passive income, MLMs will generally prey on people's inherent desires for a better lifestyle. Lifestyle marketing can be a pretty terrible thing, and it's not just found in MLMs. I think we need to make that distinction here. It's found with a lot of influencers, gurus, even just straight up normal companies. They use these tactics, but it's 
particularly strong and toxic in the MLM community. Not only that, but there's a weirdly large amount of people in the MLM community that are just straight up lying about their lifestyle. And it's all under the guise of fake it till you make it. Often they're even told to use these tactics because it's the lifestyle that they will have once they become rich. So what's the difference between showing it now rather than later? So leaders within the MLM will try to teach their downline how to act to show how good their life has become since they joined the MLM and it's all fake. It's people posting things that make it seem like, hey, look at this car that I won. But then you find out that they're actually posting about a lease that's conditional upon a certain amount of sales that they get every month or a certain amount of new recruits. So they have to hit a quota to even qualify to not have to pay for that car. And it's not even a car that they own. Or they'll post a picture by the pool and you'll find out that they actually paid for the trip themselves and they're hoping to get reimbursed for it if they hit a certain quota. So there's a lot of these lifestyle posts that they'll put out there that it's too good to be true because it is. People living in poverty or those who want a supplemental income are generally the ones who are most at risk of joining an MLM. And sadly, statistics show that 75% of people in MLMs are women. It's a business opportunity where you make your own hours, it's flexible, the income ceiling is potentially infinite. So what's the downside, right? I mean, they'll tell you that the product pretty much sells itself, so why not join this business opportunity? The person who's at home with the kids doesn't have time for a normal job or needs to be able to work from home is typically going to be more attracted to the idea of how an MLM portrays itself. But once again, before joining, the questions have to be asked. Why is the barrier for entry so low or why isn't there an interview conducted to get into it or why do I have to pay to work for them. It's ridiculous. These MLMs will do whatever they can to try to convince you that you're not the product or the customer, which is why they spend any time at all developing an actual product, even if the product itself is not really making that much money for the company. They'll tell you that you're a business owner, an IBO, an independent business owner, that there's no difference between this being in an MLM or buying up inventory in a store with a physical location, right? Or that this is exactly the same as buying a McDonald's franchise, but there's some really big problems with these arguments. There's a really good article on the art of manliness that talks about these two specific arguments and it shows the flaws in it and it points it out in a very clear and concise way. I'll link it down below. I recommend reading this article because it goes through everything about why you shouldn't join an MLM. First off, in 2022, you don't actually have to have a physical location to sell a product. And if you're selling for someone else, you definitely don't need to buy up inventory. Affiliate marketers promote products all the time and all they have to do is put a link to the product and generate traffic to that link. And the system, it bypasses a third party. You buy directly from whoever's actually selling it and it just applies a commission to whoever the affiliate marketer is. No inventory is needed. Essentially the way that an MLM should be set up, but they're not because it's a scam. The link that they post automatically detects who the affiliate is and it applies a commission for them. It's as simple as that. If they're telling you that you have to buy product to build up an inventory, to be able to sell it, they're lying and taking advantage of you because that's simply not the case. In affiliate marketing, you don't actually have to pay to sell the product like you do in an MLM. So it's, it's the way that an MLM should have been set up, but instead they decided to turn the sales reps into the product. The next argument is about franchises. You will never see two franchises of the same company open up right next to each other, right? You'll never see two McDonald's across the street from each other or next door to each other. And the reason for this is because it would kill their business. It would cut it in half. So when you're franchising out a business, you have to have very strict rules for geolocations. In an MLM, 
they don't have any of these rules. And in this article in The Art of Manliness, it talks about an example of a church group where there were half a dozen women all selling the same product to this church group. And all it did was make it so that none of them could get any sales and everyone was just getting annoyed with them. It was hurting their relationships. So once again, the argument of it being like a franchise is it's nothing like a franchise. When you become an IBO, they're forcing you to act like a franchise with no actual geolocation limits. So they're forcing you to buy up inventory and then recruiting as many people, building as many franchises as possible in every location. And all it does is make it so that no one can make any sales. If McDonald's were to do this, there would be a McDonald's on every corner, then none of them would make any money, and then there would be no more McDonald's, which would honestly probably be pretty good for me because I love McDonald's. I decided to interview a few people who had been involved with MLMs and all of their responses were pretty similar. Typically the people that are making money in an MLM are usually the people on the top, for sure. And they do everything they can to get people signed up underneath them to push sales, whether they believe in it or not. It's all about that sale. Like I'm gonna sell my friend on selling this toothpaste or whatever it may be so that I make more money. If you believe in it, then awesome. But a lot of those people don't actually believe in the product, they believe in the sale aspect of it. I'm, if I get this many people under me, I make this much. Not, this toothpaste is amazing, you should buy it. It was more that they wanted me to recruit people, more people, and that was how I was gonna make money. Was not going to be making money writing insurance policies or anything like that. They, they always talk about freedom. Freedom of your time, freedom of your options. And I had to reprogram it in my head that there are other ways of doing that. It felt like a lot of pressure that, oh geez, I must not know what I'm doing or I must be skipping a step because I'm not being as successful as, as these other people. So could MLMs ever be a good idea? Well, they could if they adopted the principles of affiliate marketing and franchising, as well as had a good product at a competitive price. The only problem is that then they're exactly that, an affiliate marketer which millions of people are already doing. I work with clients all the time who are making great money from affiliate marketing. There's no buy-in, no stocked product, no empty promises, and no oversaturated geolocations. Back in the 1800s, snake oil became a phenomenon. These traveling salesmen would go from town to town selling this pretty much magical elixir that could cure any ailment. And once they had sold to everyone in the town and sort of exhausted that location, they would move on to the next town before everyone could realize that it was a scam. The product that they were selling was called snake oil. MLMs in pretty much every way are the modern snake oil. It's ironic that there are so many MLMs that sell essential oils. If anyone is still here at this point in the video and considering joining an MLM, I would strongly encourage you to reconsider and just start your own business. It's way more fun, just as difficult, and the success rate is so much higher. When you tell your friends about an MLM opportunity, they lose respect for you and it damages relationships. But when you tell your friends about an actual business that you're starting, they'll often either buy your product or service or they'll refer you to someone you know that could use it. The reason for this is that true entrepreneurship solves problems and serves others. And that's almost always a cause that people can get behind. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. It is actually five months later since I started filming it and I'm just finally getting to posting it. Welcome to my new studio and I just wanted to let you know that I will be changing up the format a little bit for future videos because I do want to try to make them a little more entertaining. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. Subscribe, like the video, um, that'll definitely help with the algorithm. And I also wanted to let you know that I am coming out with a free ebook. It's called Fat, Tired and Nearly Broke. And uh, you can just go to my website, morgansteinigle.com, to download your free copy.